Do you have a genealogy brick wall that you're trying to solve? Great, you can create a specialized database to help you keep track of that targeted research project. And I'm gonna show you how to do that using Roots Magic. Now a brick wall database is just a term for multiple different types of projects. Maybe you're focusing on one specific ancestor. Maybe you're doing a one name research project or maybe you're doing a DNA research project and you really don't want to have your massive family tree. There are a couple of principles to keep in mind with your brick wall database. First, you're gonna start fresh. When we try to tackle brick walls, we don't wanna have all of the information that is available and just make an assumption that it's all accurate. We actually want to start over. So we're gonna start with a fresh database. The second principle that you have to keep in mind is to stay focused. The goal of this database is not to have it be in a huge massive tree. The goal is to only have people in this tree that helps you solve your research objective, your research brick wall, or your one name study. So if you're studying all the Townsley, Townsends in New Jersey, you don't want to have Townsends from New Mexico. One, even though Townley and Townsend sounds the same, they're not the same and they're not in the same location. So make sure that you only add people to this database that are focused. Now that does mean that you can add collateral people if they help you with your research project. So if you have Germans who were on a ship from Hanover to Maryland and they hopped on a train and they arrived in Cincinnati, Ohio, well then you can keep them connected because they probably are connected in the old country or members of that traveling group, even though they aren't necessarily easy to figure out relatives, it is entirely possible that they may have clues to help you solve your primary objective of who is the ancestor of this person who traveled with these people. So you can put those extra people only if you stay focused on your primary research objective. Now, before I show you how to do this over in Roots Magic, let's walk you through the process. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a blank Roots Magic file. Think of it as Thomas McKenty's genealogy do-over. You're going to start fresh and you're going to only put in things that you have proven, which is the next point. Add a fact one at a time. Put your sources in one at a time. You're doing this because you want to ensure that you have captured every clue that those records had. You're looking over them again for the third or fourth or fifth time, but you do it over and you do it slowly. And the next thing I want you to do is as you become confident in the different facts that you have, go ahead and link individuals to family search. You may be able to reprove some facts that are there. there. You may quickly be able to see some sources other people have. And then if you want to update the family search family tree, you can. So do that. You can also take advantage of the ancestry hinting system to help you do some of your laid work. I don't think that's necessarily bad, but what I want you to do is update a tree, which we talked about in the syncing video, update a new tree to ancestry, but set the setting to private. It means you don't check the box that you have that tree, uh, tree be searchable on ancestry. Keep it private because this isn't your primary tree. This is just your project tree. Now that we've gone over some principles, let's go over how to actually do it in Roots Magic. First, we're gonna create a new Roots Magic file. We're going to do empty file, and we're going to go through all the steps to start a blank tree. So I have a blank tree. The first thing I'm going to do is add my brick wall ancestor. So I've started with the basic information and then it's gonna create a profile. Now the next step you do from here is you start working your research plan, which we have talked about in other videos. 
So I'm going to start finding records that prove John's birth. I'm going to look for records that prove John's death. And I'm going to go through and get all of the facts for John and put them into the Roots Magic Tree. So let's say the first record I found was a census record. Well, a census record discusses residence information. So I'm going to add a new fact. I'm going to type in residence. And I'm going to select residence, but not residence family. I could do residence family, but I'm going to go ahead and just do residence for now. So I'm going to type in the year. I'm going to type in the place. This is Cincinnati, Ohio. And I don't really have any details like the address. So I'm going to leave that blank. This is a primary source, meaning it is an original record. It falls into that category. And now I can come here and I can add notes, sources, uh, media tasks. Now, if this fact was connected to another person in the database, I can go ahead and link it to them as well, but they're not shared in anybody else in the tree, so they can't be shared with just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my notes. Now, your notes can be anything you want. Um, they can be in written form. They could be table information. So here I have the um, people that was in the household. I could put the age, the occupation, the stuff like that, and I can also write a little note. Make sure when you are doing a, a brick wall database that you keep your thoughts right here. And you can also put them into your research report that we've talked about here on this channel. So go ahead and check that. Go back out and make sure you add a source. So I can add a source citation. We'll talk about adding sources in another video. Let me just go ahead and add a new source. So I've completed this form and I'm adding a citation and it goes right there. And I can repeat this process for the rest of the project. When I have enough information in this tree with my notes and I have my citations, then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna connect this person to Family Search. So click over on the circles, they're currently blank. I'm gonna click on Not Linked. Roots Magix looks for this gentleman. I click match, and then I can look at the shared data part. So as I showed you in this syncing video, I can just I can now begin comparing information one at a time um, using the Roots Magic interface. There's one part I want to show you, and that's the show on Family Tree. If I click on that, then I will be taken to the Family Search version of this profile and then I can just use this to come back to the sources I can check out the memories and I can go through all of this information here to see what more stuff I want to put over in my database one fact at a time and as I build this roots magic data once I am confident I have everything that I need then I can upload it to family search. So now what do you do if you want to add somebody to the tree that isn't a relative of John but could help solve your mystery or maybe they're a potential relative you just haven't figured out how they connect. So let's go through how to add a fan club member to this brick wall database. So in order to add someone new to the Roots Magic brick wall database that's not connected we're going to come all the way up here and we're going to click on this plus button. When we click on this plus button, there's add individual spouse, parents, and add child. I'm going to add an individual. And then I'm going to begin completing this form as if I was adding John. In this case, I'm going to add Major James Townley. After I add all the details, I click OK. And now I have a new profile for Major James Townley. Then over here in my people's list, all the people that are in my database, you're going to see John, and then you're going to see Major, and you're going to see that they're not really connected to anybody, right? Clicking between each one, notice the name changes, but they're not connected to anybody. What is really great about a brick wall database is that it's a great place to keep track of some of your hypotheses. In my series about John Townley, I had a hypothesis that John could be the son of Effingham. So I knew that John was the father was the father of 
Richard Townley. He's not in this database, but I knew that John was the husband of Eveline Porter, and then he had some kids, and then the descendants went on into Cincinnati and elsewhere. I hypothesized that this John, who is the son of Effingham Townley and Rhoda, with a brother, Richard William, a sister, Abigail, and sister Jane, and a brother, Caleb, that, that this John could be this John. Now, I just put all of my research in here. I combine this with my research plan. I keep working it. I keep keeping track of it. And when I'm confident that that theory is accurate, of two men being the same one, and yeah, uh, these are the same people, what I can actually do is now I can merge the two people together. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go to this John, the one that has the wife and the children I know of. I'm gonna click on this toolbar and I'm going to come down to merge duplicates, but I'm actually gonna choose the manual merge one. So I have my primary person, that's the first John. I'm gonna look for a duplicate John, and that's this other one, the John who have the two parents and the six siblings. So I'm gonna click on select. So now there are some highlights. There's some name problems, there's some birth differences, so I'm gonna do merge into primary, and then I can click on edit person, so I can clean things up. I don't need this one anymore, but it does have the correct location, and I can delete a flag, and anything that came over that doesn't need to be in there, it's fine. And now, when I close that out, you're gonna see the family tree with Effingham as the father. Now, another thing I want you to do when you are working on a brick wall only database is to create a brick wall only task. Click on tasks and then the screen opens up and we're going to do add task and then type in the different tasks of the things that you want. So in the task, I went ahead and said what I wanted to do, search newspapers for John Townley. I gave it a start date. I gave it a goal and I can actually be more thorough with that goal. And when I'm finished, I can have results. When I scroll down, I can do a task type, research to do correspondence. I'm gonna label this as research, and then I'm gonna click okay. And now I have a task. So what if I wanna have that task, not just in a general task list for everybody, but I want to assign it to a specific person. Well, then we're gonna go up to people, click on his name, and then I'm in this editing for John Townley. To add a task just to him, I can either put it in the column with the to-do list or I can put it associated with a specific fact. Since it's searching for a newspaper, I'm going to put it with just him. So I'm going to click there and I can click add task. I'm not going to add a new task because I already created a task. I want the one I already created. So I can go ahead and click search newspapers for John Townley and click OK. And now there is a task for him. And when I bring it over, I can see the task in this preview window as well. So I can assign a task to a person or I can assign it to the entire family tree. So I hope that helps you get started creating a brick wall database. The things that you wanna keep in mind is keep it focused, start from scratch, add everything as you validate it, and make sure you keep a running to-do list in the uh, database. And then when you do make connections that these two people are together or this group comes with this group, then go ahead and leverage the tree to build it all together. Once you have it all ready to go, then you can upload that information to Family Search, and then you'll probably need to merge this into your tree that's linked to Ancestry. And I'll have to show you about that in a future video. Any video that talks about merging merging trees into your tree linked to ancestry that should be coming out in the future if you want more tips and tricks on how to organize your genealogy research including genealogy software be sure to check out the playlist up at the top and if you're ready for the latest video from family history fanatics be sure to check out the one right there oh hi i'm recording <laughs>